Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. My name is Clayton Chastain, your host for today's episode. Today we have with us Dr. Chantal Farmer, a research scientist at Sherbrooke Research and Development Center. So Dr. Farmer, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? Hi, first of all, thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here. And as you mentioned, I'm a research scientist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, and I've been working on sow lactation for the past 30, 35 years or so, <laughs> so <laughs> trying to increase the weight of piglets at weaning. Gotcha. So yeah, on that, so I saw your recent study on the additional lysine and gestation diets causing increased mammary development in the sows. Can you tell us a little bit about that study? Sure. That's a very interesting study. But before I start with this study, I just want to give you some background first. You know, why are we interested to increase, you know, milk yield in the sow? It's important to know that right now the sows are not producing enough milk to sustain optimal growth of all their piglets. Piglets would grow more if the sows would produce more milk. So we have work to do to increase her amount of milk. Then the second important point is we can work through mammary development. If you increase mammary development and you have more cells that can synthesize milk, then you increase the milking potential of that animal. So it's an avenue that's interesting to increase the amount of milk produced. Uh, and when we talk about mammary tissue, it's important to know two major tissues. The parenchymal tissue is the good tissue where you have the cells that will synthesize milk, the epithelial cells. So you want to increase mammary parenchyma. The extra parenchymal tissue is in fact the fat layer around the mammary gland that does not synthesize milk. So it doesn't really matter if you increase it or not. So just as a background, that's something that people need to know to really understand uh, where we're going with this project. So now to talk about that specific project on lysine, a lot of work has been done to try to see what nutritional treatment could stimulate mammary development. And in gestation, uh, in the late period of gestation, from the 90 to 110, well, up to farrowing, in fact, is a rapid, is a period where you see rapid mammary development. And again, something that people have to know, it is only when there is already mammary development taking place that we can stimulate it. There is such a period before puberty, from three months of age to puberty, and there is such a period at the end of gestation and also during lactation. But during lactation, we don't really mind because we want the animal to already have a maximal number of milk synthesizing cells when farrowing occurs. So in that critical period of late gestation, day 90 to farrowing, when you have rapid mammary development, it's important to see, can we do anything to stimulate this development? So there was a study by Chin collaborators in 2019 where they increased the amount of lysine fed to the animal in that critical period from the 90 of gestation to farrowing, they increased it by 40%. In their case, the estimated requirement for those animals were 14.7 grams per day. So a 40% increase led to 20.6 grams per day of lysine being fed. And what was interesting is that they saw an increase in the average daily gain of the piglets, a significant increase in that gain of piglets in the following lactation. And one of the hypotheses is that it could have been due to a significant greater mammary development. So what I've done is the exact same treatment, 40% increase in lysine intake in that critical period in the end of gestation. But then instead of letting the animals farrow, I slaughtered the animals on the 110 of gestation, looked at fetals, uh, fetal development, so fetal weight, and collected the mammary glands so I could do an analysis on the weight of the parenchymal tissue and also its composition. So this treatment, in order to increase lysine by 40%, I've done it by increasing the amount of soybean in the diet. So obviously increasing soybean also leads to an increase in protein. So in fact, it went from 15.4 to 21.4% protein. And it also increased some other amino acids. So we do not know if the effect is solely through lysine, but there was a 40% increase in lysine. And when I looked at mammary tissue, there was a 44% increase in the weight of the parenchymal tissue. So it's like a one-to-one -one relation between the increase in lysine and the increase in the weight of the milk 
synthesizing tissue, which is really, really interesting. So what is it telling us? It's telling us that right now, the amount of lysine that is recommended in late gestation is not enough to sustain maximal growth of this milk synthesizing tissue. So it's going to be really important in the future to adjust feeding of the animals in this late gestation period to make sure that she's getting enough of the lysine. So one question I had was the higher lysine diet showed, I mean, like you said, a 44% increase in total parenchymal mass of the sows. So based on other past studies, because you mentioned that's the more functional type of tissue in the mammary gland, um, will that translate, like how, how much milk yield will that translate into? The ex- I mean, might be, have to be more of a guess at this point, but that increase by 44%, do you in- expect like roughly a 40% increase in milk yield or is it going to be more, a little less than that? I would not want to put a number on it, but what I can tell you is that the evidence we have that increasing parenchymal tissue will lead to an increase in milk yield is based on a comparison of obese animals with fat animals. So sows that have 36 uh, millimeters of back fat at the amputation, which is really obese, will produce seven liters of milk per day in lactation. And sows that are not obese, that were having 25 millimeters of back fat, produced nine liters of milk in lactation per day. So a difference in back fat thickness will lead to a two liters per day difference in the amount of milk produced. I do not know how that compares to what we will achieve in terms of lysine. But all I can say is that, yes, if you increase parenchymal tissue in the mammary gland at the end of gestation, it will lead to an increase in milk yield in the following lactation. Gotcha. So based on that answer, and then also kind of what you said at the end there about not knowing exactly for sure which uh, amino acid it is, or if it was a due to increased protein overall, do you have any plans to continue to do research to kind of delve deeper into that? Definitely, definitely. I mean, you cannot have such wonderful results and just stop there. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So uh, right now I'm uh, asking for a grant. And in fact, in collaboration with Leanne Huber, who's a professor at the University of Guelph, Ontario in Canada. So together we will look, try to look more specifically, is the effect coming from the lysine itself or from other amino acids? And uh, could another source of protein have uh, a positive effect? However, in the past, uh, protein intake was increased in late gestation without really seeing an impact on memory development. So anyway, I'm really thinking that lysine has an impact, but we will continue on to try to focus and see whether, you know, adding specifically lysine will lead to the same results, which we absolutely need to know the answer to. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I think we'll all be looking forward to that because this is one that's been a very interesting topic for me to talk about, I'm sure. And Well, I just want to add one little thing is that right now I'm also starting a project where instead of using primiparous animals, I'm using multiparous animals and also increasing the lysine by 40% through soybean and late gestation. So it's really going to be interesting to see if gilts have a greater impact of this greater lysine compared to multiparous animals or if the same increase is seen in those multiparous animals. So those results I will have a year from now. So I'll be happy to share them again with you. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing this with us. And to everyone else listening, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it and share with us, feel free to send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research. <laughs>